although texture will be studied in the next section, it is necessary to mention it here briefly as it relates to timbre. Texture deals with the number and type of musical elements in the score. In this lecture, we will take one of the most common textures, a homophonic texture, and look at the different ways in which we can use pure and composite timbres within this type of texture. These differences can be subtle, especially if you've not previously trained your ear to recognize differences in timbre. To aid you in hearing the subtle differences, it is recommended that you listen on a good set of speakers in a quiet place. Here we have the viola playing the melody and the cello playing the accompaniment. Each part is a pure timbre. Here we have the viola playing the melody, while the bassoon doubles the cello in unison on the accompaniment. This adds color and slightly reinforces the accompaniment, but at the same time makes the pure timbre of the viola stand out in contrast. Here we have the cello playing the accompaniment, while the oboe doubles the viola in unison on the melody. This adds color and slightly reinforces the melody, but at the same time makes the pure timbre of the cello stand out in contrast. Here we have the viola and oboe doubling in unison on the melody, while the bassoon and cello double in unison on the accompaniment. The sound is fuller since both melody and accompaniment are doubled, but now there is a lack of pure timbre. Here all parts are once again doubled in unison, as in example 4 except this time we've introduced an octave doubling by having the flute play the melody an octave higher than the oboe and viola. This adds color and reinforces the melody even more. It also adds a little brightness to the melody, since the flute retains more of its own timbre due to the octave doubling, rather than blending in and becoming a true composite as with unison doubling. Here we have the same example as example 5, except this time we've added another octave doubling. The double bass is doubling certain pitches in the cello part, but one or two octaves lower. Remember, the double bass sounds one octave lower than written. This adds color and reinforces the accompaniment even more. The pizzicato articulation also adds a certain degree of brightness. The double bass retains more of its own timbre due to the difference in articulation and also due to the octave doubling. A skillful orchestrator is able to effectively balance the use of pure timbres and composite timbres to obtain the desired sound. While composite timbres can be different and new, keep in mind that if you are constantly mixing timbres with unison doublings, you will lose the contrast and exhilarating sound of pure timbres. It is vital to vary the timbre throughout a piece to avoid a bland, flat-sounding orchestration. But be aware that constantly changing timbres can become just as monotonous as rarely changing timbres.